Dr. Matt Lyon. I'm really excited to talk to you today and uh, show you some really neat things. Very non doctorish I want to talk to you about the oldest wind instrument in the world. It's called the didgeridoo. It comes from Australia and the Aboriginal peoples, the traditional indigenous people of Australia who were there for tens of thousands of years, developed this instrument. And the way they did that is that Termites would naturally hollow out eucalyptus trees, branches, and so forth. And somehow, as, as innate intelligence has a way of doing with all of us, it leads us to connection with our natural world. And through their connection to the natural world, they're able to make great music with didgeridoos. And in fact, it was a lot more than just great music. Besides being the oldest wind instrument and a tool to create amazing, funky, beautiful, soul-shaking music, it was also a way for them to tell stories. Not only was the didgeridoo a way to tell stories, the didgeridoo was a way to connect community, to connect in celebration of life, to connect in grieving and death, to connect in rites of passage as we progress through the various stages of life's journey, it was, a, it was a way to transmit the, the essence of the human soul and the human soul's experience of the natural world through the culture of the Aborigines. So, a lot of the cultural aspects of the Aborigines, they're not as relevant to us today in the Western world, namely because we live in an industrialized society, and they didn't. However, the essence of the music, the essence of the instrument, the essence of the sound, which ultimately is this beautiful, primal, soulful, exquisite connection to the mystical, this exquisite connection to the natural world, this exquisite connection to the innate wisdom that imbibes and informs all things we see this is, this is the relevance of the didgeridoo to us today. So beautiful is this instrument that's been used transgenre, transgenrely. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. I've heard it in rock and roll. I've heard it in electronic music. I've heard it in the singing of traditional Indian devotional songs. I've heard it in jazz. I've heard it in, obviously, traditional Australian music. Very non-traditional Australian music. This instrument connects us because it connects our hearts. And the heart's an organ that pumps blood. The heart's an organ that has its own extension of the human nervous system. But really, the heart is our mystical compass. The heart is actually a sensory organ that helps us connect through our bodies to the unmanifest world. And when that sensory experience is clear of impediments, clear of obstruction. We experience reality as it is, rather than the common experience, which is that there's reality, which I would call reality with a capital R. Then there's our, our perception, which is filtered through a life of conditioning. And the gap between those is what we often call stress. And the greater that gap is, the more difficult it is for this sensory apparatus of the heart to experience reality with a capital R and all of its splendor, grandeur, transcendence, and imminence. So, I'd like to play the didgeridoo for you. In fact, I'm going to the beautiful thing about didgeridoos is that there's so many different kinds, and each kind has its own language. The beautiful thing is there's very little that's predictable in didgeridoo playing. Every, every little didgeridoo or very big didgeridoo in this case comes from a different kind of plant, and each plant has its own essence, its own energy, its own spirit. And as a result, each didgeridoo plays very differently. And furthermore, we tend to classify didgeridoos not only based on the kind of tree or plant that they come from, for instance, they can come from eucalyptus. Modern didgeridoos can come from hemp. 
agave cactus, as is the case with this one, um, bamboo, and a number of other things. So we can classify them that way, but we can also classify them based on the note or tone of their sound. And in this case, I want to play for you an A didgeridoo, because the A sound is very deep. And the A takes us deep into the embodied experience of our unconscious. And in our unconscious is the unmanifest world, that which we don't know about. That's why we call it unconscious. Most of our dreams come out of this, our habitual reactions to life and everything we perceive, our projections, all come out of the unconscious. One of my favorite scholars, writers, and philosophers of our time was Joseph Campbell. And he used to draw a big diagram of a circle. And about three quarters of the circle was cut by a line. Well, there was a line going through the circle, and three quarters of the circle below it was what he indicated as the unconscious. This top part is our conscious thinking apparatus through which we process the world through stories, through concepts, through maps, through models. The terrain underneath was the unconscious. The ego, which sits in this conscious part, was the part that's trying to understand and, and make sense of the unconscious and filter it through its lenses so that it can match that up with what it sees in its conscious world. But in the unconscious, there's so much gold. So I'd like to play the didgeridoo, this A no didgeridoo, and I'd like you to listen to it and just see what comes up in your body as, as your, the sense organ of your heart begins to feel the vibrations of the sound. It begins to draw us in very deep inside. Very deep inside, not only into the unconscious, but into the caves of the heart, which the yogis of India have always described as emitting this field of waveforms that come out. And these caves of the heart is where this, this boundless essence, this boundless joy, and this boundless eternal identity with oneness and with the self, with the capital S, comes from. So with that, I'd like to play this.